On December 3rd, Venezuela is going to the polls to vote in the referendum that disputes over the SK vote territory, which consists of five questions. What is the context of the second question of the Consulta de Referendum? Let's review another episode in defense of the Guyana and Sakiba with more details. Madeleine Garcia gave us more information on the issue. What is the context that led to the formulation of the second question of the consultative referendum of December 3rd in defense of the Guayana and Sequiba? We continue telling you in this Telesource special series. After signing the fraudulent 1899 Paris Award, one of the U.S. lawyers who defended Venezuela in the trial left a will, which he authorized it to be published after his death, confessing everything, the fraud, it was a pact between the U.S. and the United Kingdom. I quote a part of will of Severo Maldet Prevost. The decision of the court was therefore unanimous, but also it is true that I gave Venezuela the most important sector in dispute from a strategic point of view. It was unfair to Venezuela and deprived of our very large and important territory over the Great Britain had not the slightest right. This is a critical testimony, so that in 1962, Venezuela denounced to the United Nations the fraud of the Paris Arbitration Award of 1899, which was and is null and void for Venezuela. In 1966, the United Nations accepted our proposal to reach an agreement, forcing England and Guyana to negotiate. Guyana as the subsequent inheritor of the territory that we are claiming. But from 1962, England sat down with us for four years, which was an implicit recognition of the invalidity and nullity of the treaty of the Paris arbitration, and therefore a new era started. What is Venezuela claiming? Let's sit down to negotiate in a practical and mutually convenient resolution for both sides. The Geneva Agreement became the evidence of the felony. If the Paris Arbitration Award of 1899 had not been so fraudulent, the United Kingdom would never have its signing. Yes, the 1899 Arbitration Award is not only null and void due to the nullity defects that took place during its negotiation and process, which we must remember also violated the disposition that had been agreed in the Treaty of Washington of 1897, but also because of signing an agreement by both sides in the city of Geneva precisely in February 1966. Even when British Guyana was under British colony, because they had already assumed not only the new and void character of this agreement, but also for the legal effects after the implementation of this agreement. Furthermore, the 1899 Arbitration Award was never executed, and therefore it was also ruled out. In fact, it was surprising how the International Court of Justice did not pronounce on the null and void nature of this 1899 arbitration site, which today Guyana intends to revitalize before the international legal instances precisely because of its unfair and unenforceable nature. Historically, the Geneva Agreement of 1966 is the only valid international legal instrument for Venezuela to solve the controversy through dialogue, which Guyana is now turning back on, perpetuating the history of this possession by ex-colonizer. The reason? ExxonMobil's interest in the resources there, announced with bombs and fireworks in the marine territory that has yet to be demarcated. For Venezuela, dialogue is essential to solve the dispute and maintain peace in the region. For these reasons, Venezuelans are asked, do you support the Geneva Agreement of 1966 as the only valid legal instrument to reach practical and satisfactory solution for Venezuela and Guyana? Regarding the controversy over the territory of Guayana Esequibo, see you next time.